Hey, Dr. C here with you. So Tina sent in a question last week. She said, um, let me get this right. Hi, Dr. C. I've been taking thyroid medication for the last four months, but I feel the same as I did before I started. And my levels also don't stay stable. So what's wrong? <laughs> hey, Tina, this is for you. So why is it you could be on thyroid medication but have it not seeming to work? Well, let's talk about 21 possible reasons. <laughs> so no particular order for these, but just go through and think about any one of these factors because it might be more than one, but any one of these could cause exactly what you're describing. Okay, number one is coffee. You know, I, I personally don't do a lot of caffeine and many do better without it, but I'm not really against it. You know, there's a lot of data saying that some people per their genotype may benefit by regular use of coffee or tea. However, it can make thyroid medication hard to absorb. So if you're someone to where you take it, but it doesn't seem like you're really getting it, that can be the reason why. And some of the studies even show that coffee used as much as 10 hours after taking a pill can make you not absorb it well. <laughs> so pretty wild thing, but yeah, one step is just try going without the coffee for a little while. Some studies suggested that tyrosine may be less of a factor for that. So if that could be you and you're on a T4 only medication and otherwise that works well, and you don't want to give up the coffee, you could consider switching to tyrosine. Okay. Number two, supplements. Yeah, almost anything that you take right during the time you've taken your thyroid medication can make you not absorb it properly. And if you're not absorbing it, you're not going to benefit. And it's a convenient time first thing in the morning to take a lot of pills, but take your thyroid all by itself. You know, here's the ritual I encourage. Put your tablet out on your bed stand assuming that there's no kids or dogs that might get into that, and have a glass of water ready to go with it. First thing when you wake up, your feet hit the floor, you take your thyroid pill. Let's go a little more granular. So when you're going to bed, don't just have the tablet available, but open up the bottle. You can usually flip the cap of the bottle and put a single tablet in the cap. Here's the rationale for that step. Uh, you might wake up somewhere like, three, four in the morning and be half awake, that's a great time just to take your thyroid tablet. Since you've got one out, when you do get up for real in the morning, you'll know easily if you did take it or not. You can just see if it's gone. So that's a great habit. Take it right when your feet first hit the floor. Once you've done that, there's usually at least half hour or an hour's worth of things that you'll end up doing in the bathroom, You know, showering, using the bathroom, brushing your teeth, whatever else. Once that's happened, then food and pills are fair game, but not until then. Number three would be oral contraceptives or natural hormone replacement therapy. And this is one to where it's really well known and it's a really straightforward thing, but it's often missed. So your body makes a blocking protein called thyroid, um, thyroid binding globulin, and it's in proportion to how much estrogen is in your system. Now, if you're a menstruating woman, this is one of the reasons why your thyroid levels change throughout the month. But when you're adding in an oral contraceptive, uh, even a topical or a vaginal contraceptive, or you're adding in natural hormone replacement or any hormone replacement, or if you're, ex you're subtracting one of those things, if you're doing one of those things, then you stop. So if you start or stop anything with estrogen, it can radically change your body's response to thyroid medication. So doctors should know that, and when a doctor is adding or removing estrogen, they should be planning ahead of time. Now, the direction this goes is that the more estrogenic influence, the more your body blocks thyroid. So how that could play out if you were to be pretty stable on your meds and you added in hormone replacement, you know, hot flashes, night sweats, well, now you're probably going to need more thyroid treatment, and that's predictable. And then vice versa. Let's say that you've been on HRT, worked well, don't need it anymore, so you stop it. Well, in that case, if you're also on thyroid medication, you will probably need less thyroid medication. And my docs and I, we plan for that, and we actually adjust those things at the same time by a small amount, and then we recheck and give it fine-tuning. If you don't, you're going to say, oops, and you'll be chasing those levels up and down for a long time. Okay, so number four, autoimmune gastritis. This is the most common thing that you may never have heard of, but 30 to 40 percent of people with autoimmune thyroid disease are known to have a condition that can make them not effectively absorb things. This breaks down the parietal cells in the stomach and causes them to stop adequately releasing hydrochloric acid. Now, a popular 
approach is to take pills of hydrochloric acid. And it might or might not help, but it could definitely hurt. There's really good data that with autoimmune gastritis, you would be more at risk for esophageal cancer or stomach cancer if you were taking hydrochloric acid pills. So ironically, the very people who could perhaps benefit from that in the short term are the ones who are harmed from that. So we think about this condition being present if you have also, you're prone to anemias, especially iron deficient anemias. B12 anemias can happen. They're often later in the disease process. We also think about this for just unexplained digestive symptoms. So if you're on thyroid meds, you don't absorb them well, you're anemic, you've got maybe heartburn or something, it's really suspicious and you should be screened for that. In those cases, there are some workarounds or there are some dose adjustments. All right, number six, uh, HS, as in bedtime, hour of sleep, dosing. Some people do a lot better with nighttime dosing. Now, it's been studied and there's not a clear group effect. There may be a subtle advantage to groups overall for morning dosing. So yeah, if you don't know, morning dosing is probably best. But if everything else is dialed in, and maybe you're someone to where that hour or so after your tablet is just hard to make happen, uh, you know, I eat soon after waking. That would be a struggle for me. So if that could be you, then nighttime dosing is a pretty reasonable option. Yeah, the studies are mixed. If, it, if it's less effective, it's not by much, like maybe a few percentage points, if even, and that can easily be accommodated for. The one big pitfall about it is that it takes longer for food to leave your stomach and make room than it does for the thyroid tablet to leave your stomach and make room. So in terms of after meals, you wanna look at at least two hours after your last meal before you would take the thyroid tablet. Whereas on the other side of that, if you're talking about before a meal, that could be as close as one hour. So if you do a late meal, that might be a tough hit. But yeah, you could do that right when you go to sleep. Uh, don't drink a lot of water so you're not peeing all night, but otherwise just take it right when you go to bed at least two hours after your last meal. Okay, number seven, uh, take your thyroid medication once daily. Many people have been prescribed to take it multiple times per day. I understand the logic behind that. The, the thought process is more so relevant with T3 medications. So some doctors see T3 medications and they see the absorption pharmacokinetics. They see that in the four to 10 hours after taking it, there are higher blood levels. And the doctors confuse those higher blood levels with the activity of the hormone. And they're not the same thing. How frequently we take a medication is not based upon a peak in the blood levels. It's actually the opposite. It's based upon the urinary excretion. So we call that a half-life. It's how quickly you get rid of half of the dose of medication. And the half-life for T3 is a little more than a day. It's about 30 hours. So you can take it once a day and the effects of it in your body will be constant even though the blood levels are not constant. So yeah, many give it many times a day trying to chase steady blood levels well, healthy people that make their own thyroid hormone, they don't have steady blood levels. They make a pulse dose in the morning and the blood levels taper throughout the day, even though the hormone works in the cells all throughout the day. So yeah, so once daily dosing is more effective than twice or three times daily dosing. It's something that it's consistent with your body's biologic circadian rhythm. Taking it multiple times is inconsistent with our biologic rhythms. And many have issues with their sleep or their symptoms or their blood levels just not being stable when they take it multiple times per day. Uh, number eight, wrong potency dispensed. You know, this is something that, um, I don't know, over the years, I've learned just to assume so little. I've had so many times where someone will come in and they say, yeah, I was on what you prescribed and it, it wasn't working well, my levels were off, I didn't feel well from that. So I always ask people to bring in their medication when they came. And you would be surprised how commonly I would look at the bottle and it just wasn't the potency they were supposed to be getting. And it just said that. There are times too to where it may say the potency, but the tablets are not that potency. So any tablet you have based upon it's the code imprinted on it and the color and the scoring, the little line in the middle or lack of scoring, you can just put that code into Google and you can find out what it is you've got. Like it'll say NT1, for example, for one grain nature thyroid. But yeah, you can put in that code and confirm the tablet you have. But there are times in which the label might say, you know, your doctor might have prescribed you a one grain dose and you were given a half grain dose. Or maybe the bottle says one grain dose, but the tablets are half grain tablets. 
those things happen. And I'm not excusing it, but there are things that we should consider because sometimes it's the most obvious, simple thing that no one would have thought of. <clears throat> Number nine. This is a big one. So anemias can skew your thyroid levels. <clears throat> and this is a two-way issue because abnormal thyroid function can skew your iron levels. But yeah, if your iron is not off, that can also make your thyroid hormone levels on tests inconsistent. And it can cause a lot of those same symptoms to show up, even if they shouldn't, even if your other blood levels are normal. So yeah, do bear in mind that if iron is not right, your thyroid may not make sense. Number 10 would be compounded medication. So there's a lot of different types of thyroid meds. I'll talk about several of these. This is the one I really recommend the least. And I hate to make waves and, you know, I don't want to be a drama llama, but compounded thyroid medications are not standardized. So they're made and they can be intended to be made with a certain potency, but there's no checks and balances on that system. And I've seen patients almost die from those things being made wrong. You know, I, I didn't prescribe them. Other doctors did, but, but no, it's not a good thing. And I don't doubt that in most cases, they're probably good approximations and they're reasonably well done. But these are things that good enough ain't good enough. <laughs> we need to know that 99.999% of the time, you're going to get what you're supposed to get. It, it can't be willy-nilly and it can't be usually good and it can't be that, you know, this pharmacist at this place does a good job. That's not acceptable. It's got to be something that doesn't rely upon a particular person's skill. It's got to be something that's well consistently made and has some checks and balances. So yeah, if you're on a compound medication, yeah, I don't troubleshoot on compound medications. The first thing I would do is switch to a standardized, consistently made medication, and then move forward and see how we can make sense of it. Okay, uh, number, number 11 would be product variability. Now, this is tricky. Here's where we get granular <coughs> about specific brands. And so you want your product standardized, and with compounded, that's not there. So once they are standardized, there's a couple of different guidelines they may adhere to. The, the most lax of which is the United States Pharmacopeia. They've got to do that. That's like the speed limit. You know, you can't legally not drive the speed limit. But that can allow for up to 20% variation in active hormones for natural thyroid or 10% for synthetic thyroid. And when you get down to the brass tacks of micrograms and absorption and symptoms, that can be a lot. And that can be a classic thing to where you're doing really well, you go to refill your prescription, and now you were given the same thing, but it's not working in the same ways. So that can be variability from batch to batch. We just had a recent recall for NP thyroid. They made a batch that was far too potent, and some people had harm or side effects from that. And that's a brand that does have more variability. So I do prefer ones that have fewer binders of fillers, like tyrosine or WP thyroid, or ones that have good standardization as well, like Nature Thyroid. So yeah, all those three are the brands that I like the very most because they're the most consistently standardized and the best absorbed. Uh, so number 12 would be truly NPO. Are you really taking it away from food? <laughs> uh, and I mentioned before about supplements and coffee being a factor. So any food can be a factor too. You know, I've got a gal that I can I can see her face as plain as day in my head, and this is probably, shoot, 25 years ago. Uh, she was on thyroid treatment, a sweet gal, I knew her and her family, and she was doing really well until she wasn't, you know, and then she was symptomatic, she had, her hair was thinning, she was tired, and her scores reflected that. She was blatantly hypothyroid. And I thought, shoot, let's just step this up and fix it. But it didn't work, and it didn't work, and it didn't work. And finally, she was on over three grains of thyroid, which per her body size, her thyroid would have never made close to that much. So I knew she had to be badly malabsorbing it because it was way more than she would have needed. And she didn't have digestive issues. Um, I was pretty convinced that she was taking it regularly. You know, other things were not there. And I kept asking and asking and asking. I said, please tell me what your routine is and what else are you taking it with? And she said repeatedly that she was just doing water. And then finally, one time after the fourth or fifth, I, I'm glad that I stuck with it. You know, I, I, I could have easily let it go and just not pushed it further, but I just kept on pushing it. And finally she goes, you know, I, I do have my, with my orange juice. And I thought, okay, let me guess. Do you have a calcium fortified orange juice? And she did. So yeah, anything can make you not absorb thyroid well, 
but some things are just awful, and calcium's in that awful list. So when it's at the same time as thyroid meds, it's just not gonna work. And that's what was happening for her. So you definitely need it like totally, completely away from food. Uh, water only, super, super important. So another reason, number 13, why a medication might not work. Sometimes uh, people do a lot better with medications that have T3 in them. They make thyroid medications that have T4 or T3 or a combination, and many do better with that mixture. Now, there are plenty of folks that take T4 and they do just fine, it definitely happens. But there's genes that we know of that make people less likely to do well on just T4 by itself. And it's funny because I've seen a lot of conventional authors acknowledge that fact and talk about these genes as being you know, exceptional or unusual. But then I've looked up the genes and looked at the prevalence of these genes in different groups around the world. And most groups of us, those genes are the norm. They're not exceptions. In some groups, they're like 80% of the population has those types of genes. So it's not weird. And if you feel like that could be you, you're not weird. That's actually more common than not. So yeah, T3 can make a big difference. So number 14, along those same lines, sometimes T2 is the game changer. Now, you may well have heard about T4 and T3, but many have not heard about T2. T4 is the main hormone your gland releases. Your gland also makes some T3, and then your body makes a lot of T3 out of the T4. But there's one more T that's also important, and that's T2. And it turns out, for many people, that's the big game changer for <coughs> your energy levels and for your metabolism. So where do you get T2? Well, if your thyroid works great by itself, you got it. You know, it's being produced and being converted properly. But if you've got thyroid disease, the odds are pretty good you are low in that. You have very little, if any, T2. So they do not make it by itself. It's only found in natural desiccated thyroid. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer that by default. You know, you're getting a full spectrum of T4, T3, and T2 the same way you would if your thyroid was working fine and you were converting it all perfectly. So some do much better when T2 is in the mix. Okay, number 16, your pharmacists change brands. Ah, makes me nuts, this happens. So you can be cruising along really well. You're on Nature Thyroid, you're on WP Thyroid, and things are fine, you're feeling well, everything is stable. Go to refill, and now in the coming weeks, you feel awful. You know, the fatigue comes back, your weight starts shooting up again, uh, your, mood, your mood tanks, but you're supposed to be on the same thing and nothing should be different. But back to that idea of pill potency and inspecting your pills, pharmacies will often give you a different brand than was prescribed. Now, when a doctor prescribes a medication, there's two ways that, you know, back in the day when it was paper prescriptions, when we could sign one of two spots, now they're electronically signed by and large, and you can check a couple boxes. So you can check a box saying dispense as written, which means give the patient that brand, you know, or you can write substitution permissible, permissible, which means sure, you can swap out a generic if you wish. So even when doctors write dispense as written, we've been aware of countless cases in which patients have walked out with a brand other than the brand that the doctor prescribed for them. And in many cases that occurred after many times they got the right brand, so it's not consistent. So yeah, you may get the wrong brand. And the brands, the active hormones don't vary all that much from brand to brand, but the inactive ingredients do. And the inactive ingredients can change exactly how that tablet breaks down in your body. So you can figure out uh, per those inactive ingredients, you know, how to take it, how to adjust it and get it dialed in. But now if you've got a different set of inactive ingredients, you're starting from scratch. And there's even a bigger problem with generic medications. So if you're given a generic medication, and this is true for uh, T4 medications, T3, natural thyroid, any of those, with a generic, they can be made by different manufacturers. So even if you're given generic that comes from manufacturer A, next time you could get it from manufacturer C. So same thing, you can get different inactive ingredients, and you're starting over from scratch where you're getting it right inside your body. So you never want to be prescribed generics. Your doctor always should write dispense as written and then double check your tablets. You know, make sure you've got the actual right tablets. And again, there's a code on those tablets. You can look that up online and confirm that you've got the same brand you got before because it doesn't always happen. At Integrative Health, we dispense to our patients. We 
order only tyrosine, WP thyroid, and nature thyroid. And we stock those, we keep the potencies, and we make sure people get just that because there's no other options. So that's why we've taken that approach. So 17 would be fatty liver. And this is something that you can have, but it can elevate and pass some threshold after which it changes how your thyroid works and how your body responds to TSH from your pituitary. So if your liver function is off, that can skew your levels and also cause many of those symptoms. So yeah, big thing. And we suspect that whenever a woman's ALT blood score is greater than 18, or her waist circumference around her belly button is more than half of her height. So if you're five feet tall, uh, five times 12, 60 inches, you'd want your belly button not to be over 30 inches. If it were, that would be suspicious for fatty liver. And that could be making your body not use thyroid properly. The solution there, really the metabolism reset diet was all about how to reverse that. And the cool thing is you can, you can reverse it pretty quickly, but yeah, good thing to sort out. So number 18, expired lot. Now I see this one too. Doctors will prescribe a version of thyroid that is not the most common. You know, most people don't go on natural desiccated thyroid. So pharmacists, if they have that, they might be feel pressure to use whatever brand they have lying around or whatever supplies of it they have. And it may not be a current lot any longer. That's something that you won't always know from the tablets or from the bottle. It won't always say that, but it's something just to think about. So that's an argument to where if it's a concern, knowing the lots, knowing the manufacturer, knowing exactly the whole supply chain. And that's a perk about your doctor being able to order that and supply that for you directly. Number 19, not taking it regularly. And this is a big thing. You know, that's why I like the idea of really ritualizing the pill process. You, you, at nighttime, you put up the glass of water, you put the pill in the cap, but it's so easy to miss a day or two here or there. The other thing people will use that can be helpful is the pill trays. And those are great just to know that you took the pill for that day. So you can put you know, the tray together for the week or for the month, and you've got an easy objective tool to see whether you took it or not on a given day. But very commonly people can miss a day, miss a few days, or try to double up. It doesn't work well. Yeah, you won't feel as well. And this is something that it doesn't always not work. You know, Many can miss some days and have it be rather inconsequential. But if you're not at your best, this could be the big reason why. Okay, so number 20. This is going to be a big category. I won't go into all of it, but it could be the case that what you're on is appropriate, but your tests are being done in a way to where you're not getting consistent test results, and you and your doctor don't really know how to better adjust and get your thyroid dosage to where you'll feel well. And there's several reasons for that. So one of which is they come down to the timing of your tests. You want to do your thyroid tests first thing in the morning between seven and nine before taking your thyroid tablet, not after, but before, before eating any food and at least three days after taking any supplements with biotin or any probiotics. These things can goof up your thyroid levels. And then number five, if you are a menstruating woman, you want to do your thyroid blood tests within the first nine days of your menstrual cycle or within the last eight days of your menstrual cycle. So let me just unpack that one. Uh, day one being the first day of a solid menstrual flow. So days one through nine, good to test. Days uh, 20 through 28, sorry, 21 through 28, good to test. Days 10 through 20, not good to test, not accurate during that window. So you've got to test in a way that gives you meaningful results to know how to have things adjusted. And a lot of doctors aren't clear on that. So that's one of the things that we do differently at Integrative Health. But if you're testing in a way to get consistent, meaningful results, That'll often take out a lot of the random ups and downs and the lapses on symptoms. And then number 21, this is a big thing. It may be the case that, you're, that we're thinking about symptoms not responding. They could be from a whole different condition that's not your thyroid. So there's a big host of conditions that are common amongst the people who are prone to thyroid disease. You know, women in their third, fourth, fifth, sixth decade of life. Other diseases are common for that population. There's many other conditions that are common in people who have thyroid disease. So those are separate things. So just women in those ages in general, they can get other conditions. Then people with thyroid disease, there's other things they can get. And then finally, 
there's many conditions that can be the result of abnormal thyroid levels or the result of autoimmune disease. So not just that they tend to pair up, but one actually causes the other. So those three things together, there's at least 15 conditions that I've tracked that each one affects more than 5% of those with thyroid disease. And some are as common as 84%, like anemias. So there's a really good chance there's something else affecting you, not just your thyroid. And it's important to get your thyroid levels just perfect for sure, but I think that too often we get fixated on that being the only lever to pull. And we think that if things aren't right, it's gotta be that lever. Sometimes it's not that lever. It's something altogether different that's just being missed so far. So that's it, 21 reasons why your thyroid might not work and why medications are not seeming to stabilize and help you out. So do know that the answer lies in one of those or in some combination of those, and you can feel better. Never settle for anything less. All right, take great care. Bye-bye.